Hello, my name is Jessica Murdy, and I will be presenting on libraries serving immigrant, refugee, and non-English speaking children and youth. With the ever-increasing numbers of immigrants, refugees, and non-English speakers, libraries will continue to play an integral role in serving the needs of those living in their community. Libraries can reach these populations through partnerships, collection development, information services, programs, and outreach. The services provided, and even the policies in place, will set the tone for how inclusive, welcoming, and safe library spaces are for all people. A few definitions regarding youth that libraries should take note of are second-generation immigrant children are any U.S.-born child with a, at least one foreign-born parent. These children are U.S. citizens. First-generation immigrant children are any foreign-born child with at least one foreign-born parent. Child of immigrant parents are both first and second generation immigrant children. A refugee is a person who has fled their country due to war, violence, conflict, or persecution. And new Americans are people who might consider themselves new arrivals to the U.S. and anyone who is a non-native English speaker. According to the Migration Policy Institute, immigrants make up 89.4 million or 28% of the U.S. population. In 2017, 18.2 million children under the age of 18 lived with at least one immigrant parent. This represents 26% of all children in the U.S. and is up from 19% in 2000. So this means that the number of immigrant children in the country is growing. Second generation children account for 88% of all children. In 2017, of the 27.4 million children under the age of 18, living in low-income families, 8.8 .8 million were children of immigrants. And in 2017, the Office of Immigrant Statistics recorded that the number of refugee children ages 0 to 19 that came to the U.S. totaled 23,320. According to the ALA Office for Research and Statistics 2007 Analysis of Library Demographics, Services, and Programs, 21 million people in America spoke little or no English. While 78% of people ages 5 and up in the U.S. speak English at home, this chart shows the percentage breakdown of languages other than English that are prevalent in homes. The most common language after English by far is Spanish, comprising of 62% of non-English speakers. Of course, each library will have to do research in which languages are prevalent in their communities, and that can inform their decisions on their collections, programs, and services that they offer. According to the Pew Research Center, foreign-born Hispanic library users use a library less than U.S.-born Hispanics, whites, and blacks. However, they rate library services the highest with 77% saying that programs are very important to them and their families and would see a major impact on their families and communities if the library closed. However, access to public libraries is an issue for this population. 56% of foreign-born Hispanic parents have reported that their children have been have visited a library or bookmobile in the last year versus 72% of U.S. born Hispanics. And the Hispanics overall are less likely than white parents to say that their children have visited a library or bookmobile in the past year. Barriers that immigrant, refugee, and non-English speaking children may face are their reading and library habits, transportation, literacy skills, discretionary time, knowledge of services, and trust in government agencies. Many of these barriers can be alleviated with libraries partnering with other community organizations and providing outreach to these communities. Due to current immigration policies, families are often fearful to leave their home and have stopped frequenting parks, libraries, and retail stores. Libraries offering trustworthy information and a safe space for children can alleviate these fears. Going out into the community means finding where children and families live, go to school, and hang out. Libraries can offer story times, literacy workshops, and translate materials for the community. Libraries can also help these communities by partnering with other organizations who have access to them. This ensures that services won't be duplicated and that the communities gain knowledge of the library programs and services that are offered. An example of this is that library systems in California and Texas are working with Reforma, the national organization that promotes library services to Latinos and Spanish-speaking people. They collect donations of Spanish or bilingual books for children and teens and distribute them to detention centers and shelters. Lastly, libraries should take care to build relationships and trust with immigrant, refugees, and non-English speaking families. By doing this out in the community, they will be building a bridge to bring families into the library.
Finally, libraries need to look inward in how their library might or might not reflect the community. Hiring ethnically and linguistically diverse staff will do wonders in removing barriers in serving immigrant, refugee, and non-English speaking patrons. Libraries should also take care to see how their policies might be affecting how children use their library. Erica Sanchez, a National Book Award finalist, wrote of how her hometown library required government-issued IDs in order to obtain a library card. Policies like this prevent children of immigrants and undocumented individuals from using library services and getting information. I will leave you with this quote from Patrick Sullivan, co-chair for Children in Crisis, a project of Reforma. Libraries should be reaching out to immigrant families as they would any member of the community. Making them aware of all these resources available to them can reduce an immigrant family's stress and better connect them to your community.